Do you want to massively speed up your production workflow? Do you want to look cool as fuck to the people who sit next to you on a plane? Do you want to be able to get the guy slash girl of your dreams through technical prowess alone? Then stick around because I'm going to show you how to use key commands to become both quicker and cooler. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and I've always believed that efficiency is creativity's best friend. So in any of the software I've learned over the years, I've always made sure early on to study up and start using the key commands. That way, when I'm actually working, I can save both my time and precious brain power for the fun stuff. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite key commands so you can speed up your workflow and spend more time writing great music and less time navigating menus. Some of the commands I'm going to be talking about today are set up already, but I'm going to suggest what in my opinion are more logical mappings for them, especially if you're used to Ableton. A few of the commands aren't mapped by default, but they are excellent time savers, so you're welcome. I would also urge you to take a deep dive into the shortcut section of the Bitwig preferences and start making some changes yourself. I can tell you what works for me, but ultimately it's up to you. Without any further waffle, let's jump right in. Okay, key command number one is show item help. I have that set to the key just under escape on my keyboard, and uh, it's one of my favorite Bitwig features actually. With the press of just one key, it's possible to bring up this wonderful help overview for any of the Bitwig devices or modulators, and the best part is not only does it tell you what the things are and what they do, you can still use the device while viewing the information. So I've just got a little little arpeggiated note here on polysynth, and say I didn't know what polysynth did, you know, say I don't know what that is. All I have to do is click on the device itself and then press the key that I have set for it, i.e. the one just under escape, and I get this amazing view here, which now tells me that filter resonance, ah, fascinating. So not only do I know what it is, but I can still use it. And I can now go over to the oscillator section and say, oh, okay, what's this oscillator one octave, various options. Octave offset in organ foot notation where eight dash reflects no change. Ah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So let's look at this on another instrument. Let's go over to reverb. What are these things? Build up, how smoothly the discrete reflections are distributed. Ah, fascinating. Just the fact that I can actually still use it while learning what things are, I just think is, is brilliant. And obviously this works on any of the Bitwig devices and modulators as well. You can bring it up here and I can still map things or, you know, say I had the envelope open. I can still change the parameters on it while still getting this amazing uh, uh, help view. Key command number two is zoom to fit selection or all, which I have set as command zero. In a lot of software, like internet browsers, pressing command zero will scale the content to fill your screen 100%. The reason why I like having this selection or all as opposed to the other option, which is just zoom to fit selection or zoom to fit all, is this means that I can say I'm really zoomed in here. If I don't click on anything and I press command zero, it will show me everything. However, if I just select a few notes, I can just zoom to that selection. This is incredibly handy if you've got like a long drum beat or something that is, um, you know, sliced in places and, uh, you know, we're all zoomed in here. If I just command zero it, I can see everything. But if I just really wanted to zoom in on these guys, I can just do that. And it's the same key depending on whether I have anything selected or not. Key command number three is toggle active, which I have set to zero. By default, it's set as Alt-A, which just to me seems a bit clumsy for something which I do so often. This is handy not just for being able to turn off individual instruments on and off, uh, but also for, for muting notes, and even as well for being able to hide tracks. These next five shortcuts all relate to the beat grid. By default, these are set to a rather confusing combination of shifts and alts and full stops and commas, so I've just set them to be the same as Ableton, which is command and the first five digits on the keyboard. If I want to make the beat grid bigger, all I have to do is press command 2. If I want to make it smaller, I press command 1. If I want to change through the beat grid subdivisions to be able to go from regular to triplets to quintuplets to septuplets, all I do is go through command 3. There's no need to add a previous beat grid subdivision because all you have to do is cycle through it. In order to be able to turn off 
the beat grid entirely. All I do is press Command 4, and now I can add notes wherever I want. In order to turn off the adaptive beat grid, or turn it on in this case, all I have to do is press Command 5, and this will mean that whatever I'm looking at will be scaled to an appropriate level. If, say, I don't want that, all I have to do is turn off Command 5, and now I can choose the actual beat grid subdivisions, or beat grid size, sorry. The next key command is double content, which I have set to Shift D. By default, this isn't even mapped, but this is such a time saver. If I wanted to duplicate all of this content across without having to drag it, all I have to do is click on the clip and press Shift D. This works so well for if you're trying to make variations and things, you know, you can make something for a bar, duplicate it across, add a variation, duplicate it across, add variation. It's, it's a real time saver. The next two key commands are scale 200% and scale 50%, which I have set to right square bracket and left square bracket respectively. These aren't even mapped by default, but they are again huge time savers. You can just do this by right clicking and doing that, but I mean, who has time for that? If say I did draw like a shortish note and I wanted to be able to make those into quarter notes, all I have to do now is double the length, copy across. Or say I wanted to make this one um, shorter. This will allow you to double and half the length very quickly. This is very handy as well if you, you know you have a drum machine and you need to draw in a kick, for example. Um, let's see, let's just slap that guy on there. Um, all I have to do now is... Boom! Look how quick that was. Absolutely fantastic. The next key command is make legato, which I have set to command shift L. By default, they've set that to command shift alt L, which is just too many keys for me to remember. This is really handy where, say I've drawn in a bunch of notes here or I've played them in and I want to make all of them the same length, I highlight them, Command Shift L, boom, brilliant. It's important to note, however, that Bitwig won't make the last note reach the end of the clip unless you draw a note outside of it. This is really handy as well. In one of my other videos, I showed you how if you had like a bunch of notes that were all being arpeggiated and randomized, if you want to just copy that across. All you have to do is draw one note at the end, Command Shift L, and then you can delete that last one. These next three key commands all relate to the slicing function. I have slice in place set to command P, slice to drum machine as command alt P, and slice to multi sample as command shift P. By default, slice in place and slice to multi sample aren't even mapped, and slice to drum machine is this confusing combination of command alt and D. Now, if I want to just slice this drum pattern, all I have to do is click on it and press command P. Now I could slice at onsets, or I could slice at quarter notes, or say I wanted to cut that out onto a drum machine, all I have to do is click on the clip and press Command Alt P, and now I can choose again uh, to slice at onsets, and that will cut it to a drum machine for me. Or say if this was a musical note and I wanted to cut this to a multi-sample on a sample, all I do is press Command Shift P by clicking on the clip, and now I'm slicing to a multi-sample. This is really handy for when you're chopping up other people's music to make your own stuff with. Now these last key commands all relate to being able to show and hide parts of the mixer view. I can't seem to get them all up showing here, but by default a lot of them aren't even mapped anyway. I thought it was a good idea to map them as ALT as the modifier, and then just the first letter of the window that it is. So, for example, if I wanted to show the sends and the returns, I would press ALT-S and ALT-R. The big mixer view is ALT-M. The device window is ALT-D. The inputs and the outputs are ALT-I. Now this is really handy for if you know you just want to create a bit of space quickly. All you have to do is ALT and then the first letter of that. And the last one of this as well is being able to toggle deactivated tracks. So if I have that on, which is ALT-X, if I hide things, they're just greyed out. But in a big, in a you know, like a, a big project file, if I wanted to be able to hide things, um, all I have to do is have the alt x off if i put these all on again if i wanted to be able to hide things let's alt x that i can now just zero them using the previous command we had for zero to deactivate and i can deactivate everything in the track but everything is still there it's just hidden and i can press alt x to modify between being able to see them and not see them well friends that's sadly all we have time for today but i do hope that this video has been useful if you feel that you engaged with this content, then please remember to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and send me a few clippings of your hair. Your support is the only thing that makes me feel good about myself, but like, no pressure. As always, happy Wednesday and happy creating.